Coming up to down the lane, Trey will update you guys on what is happening in the January transfer windows. We've got a couple of new players here at Plymouth Argyle and also how we got knocked out in our first game in the FA Cup. Still top of the championship though. Welcome to episode number seven of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and coming up today, a January transfer window update. And also, we play two games either side of deadline day. First up, we take on West Brom at home. Those guys all the way down in 21st. And off the back of that, we travel away to take on Swansea currently in 10th. So if you're looking forward to all that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we are at the end of January that is off the back of yesterday's episode which is all the way back at the start of December we did take on Leicester City as well as Stoke if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner it does mean we've played quite a bit of football since then we'll cover that off first before we do delve in to what we have done in the transfer window, and to be fair, our form for the most part has been very good. We've not lost any games in the championship. We backed up that draw with Leicester and that narrow win over Stoke with a very convincing 4-0 win over QPR, albeit those guys are definitely struggling. One of the teams who are still down near the relegation zone, 4-0 Ben Wayne. He picked up two goals, including one from the spot, and Morgan Whitaker and Finn Azaz, they also chipped in. So a very convincing win, that one, even though it was away from home. Off the back of that, I felt like we could rotate our team a little bit more at home, taking on Rotherham all the way down at the bottom of the championship table. But unfortunately, a one all draw. So this was a very disappointing result, but thankfully we did not lose. Mikel Miller picked up a first half goal, but unfortunately Oliver Rathbone rather unluckily did put one away off the back of a big deflection. So we do drop points there against the team that we should have been beating. But thankfully off the back of that, we picked up four straight wins. In fact, five in the championship. 2-1 over Birmingham, 3-1 over Cardiff, 2-0 away at Southampton. This, a very good performance. Of course, Southampton, they took points off us earlier this season at our home ground. So against the team formerly of the Premier League, this was a very good performance. Ben Wayne, he picked up an assist for a Lewis Gibson goal. But as you can see, we definitely deserved that win based on stats. Maybe the 2-0 scoreline, a little bit flattering, but three big points there in our last game in 2023. And off the back of that, we took on Watford, a 6-2 win, blew these guys away in the first half, but we did get a red card to Ben Wayne at the 31 minute mark off the back of him grabbing a penalty nice and early. So a mixed result there and off the back of that did actually feel like that red card could prove costly. So I did grab a goal back to make it 3-1, but thankfully off the back of that, we got out to a 5-1 lead. A couple of goals late on did blow that scoreline out to 6-2, but it did mean for our next three games that Ben Wayne was suspended, including in the first round of the FA Cup. It's one of the reasons we're coming back a little bit later in the month of January and we suffered a 1-0 defeat to lead to Bradford in the third round of the FA Cup. It was away from home but still not a good result. We won't show you guys the highlights because there's not many of them. The goal did come from the penalty spot but to be fair Bradford City they did outplay us. You can tell there by the stats albeit the XG was blown up a bit by that penalty but still despite the rotation we did for this game that was a very disappointing result, albeit thankfully the board still think we were competitive in the FA Cup. So thankfully no danger of losing our job here at Plymouth Argyle off the back of that. So it doesn't actually cost us too much, but that is a little bit frustrating off the back of going decently in a couple of games in the Carabao Cup. We get knocked out early, albeit that could actually be a blessing in disguise for our promotion hunt. In the championship, off the back of that, thankfully, bounced back nicely with a 5-2 win over Huddersfield, albeit had to come from 2-0 down in this game, and Huddersfield made it 2-0 off the back of a red card to them, but thankfully, went quite attacking off the back of that, and really put these guys to the sword, and picked up in the end a convincing scoreline win, but to be fair, that was not convincing for a long time, just that last half hour, where we really kicked into gear, and then a slightly frustrating result against the team, who are struggling a little bit, and Cardiff, of course, the team I managed on FMOE last year. We pick up a two-all draw to good early first half goals in this one to Morgan Whitaker and to Ryan Hardy. But then in the second half, Mike Cooper just decided 
we weren't going to win this game. The first of his mistakes did come right on the edge of half time. He goes out here to try and punch a ball clear, doesn't get anywhere near it, and Bella puts that one into an open net at home park. And then with 20 minutes left to be fair, this one can't take too much blame for, but still the shot that did come off of the post. That was a pretty loopy one. I thought he could have saved that effort from Mark McGuinness, but unfortunately, that first goal in particular, something Cooper really should have dealt with. And unfortunately, that did prove costly as we did blow a 2 0 lead. So, a couple of frustrating drop points there against both Cardiff and Rotherham. But to be fair, our form around that has been very good. Some of those drop points would kind of make up the expected result away against Southampton. It does mean we are still on top of the championship. And of course, as I said, that's actually not a bad situation now with no FA Cup to worry about. And we are clear of Leeds United by six points and three points further back to Ipswich Town and a decent gap back to the other teams in the hunt for a playoff spot. I dare say those teams would need a little bit of a miracle to make their way into automatic promotion reckoning over us. But there are still 18 games left in the championship season. So it's been a pretty good run off the back of yesterday's episode apart from that shock defeat in the FA Cup. But as you might have seen, during some of those results, a couple of new names here at Plymouth Argyle, so it's time to update you guys on what we have done with those transfer funds that were given to us going into the start of yesterday's episode. We were given around about 3.9 million. As you can see, we have got a player who is joining us at the start of next season. I was actually hoping he'd come in sooner, but he is out on loan currently, so he won't join us until the start of our second season of this save. But Reese Williams will join us for £250,000 currently out on loan at Aberdeen, but he looks like a really good defender, obviously with me being a Liverpool fan, quite familiar with him, but he looks like a bit of an upgrade on Dan Scar in terms of aerial ability, in terms of potential, he has a lot of that, the potential to be a decent Premier League player, so he should be a good player for us, potentially a starter for us here at Plymouth Argyle next season, Reese Williams joins us for, I think, a pretty cheap fee of £250,000, albeit We'll have to wait for that one, but in terms of transfers that do affect us this season, we'll just get rid of those big circles there and sort this out based on dates. And the first thing that happened is that we sold a player, and that was Macaulay Gillespie, down around fourth or fifth in the centre back rankings here at Plymouth Argyle. And in the end, he did want to leave. He did hand in a transfer request during the month of December, so we did shop him out through his agent, Derby County, were interested, and he has joined them. The fee was £300,000. Clicked on the wrong screen there. Let's go and have a look at his career stats. £300,000 for the former Brisbane Roar and Newcastle United. Man, as you can see, didn't play too much for us this season, so it did feel like a position that we could improve. And obviously, with Reese Williams coming in next season, that is something that will definitely be happening. But with that Reese Williams deal not quite coming in as soon as I was hoping for, it did mean that we were going to sign a centre-back, and that was actually the last player who has come through the door here at Plymouth Argyle. Sebastian Hausner has joined us. He is a player with three-star current ability, four-star potential to be fair, actually a bit of an upgrade on our current central defender starter when he's not injured. We'll talk about that shortly. And Julio Pligazello, so Sebastian Hausner, he will join us probably eventually as a first-choice centre-back. Not too sure, though, if he will be better then Lewis Gibson, but he's a decent player, comes in for £775,000 from the Swedish outfit. And IFK Gudeborgen before then was at AGF in his homeland of Denmark. Did a decent job in Sweden in his first season there. Hopefully can translate that form over to the championship, but not a bad price there for a player already valued a lot higher than that. So Sebastian Hausner is one of the players you'll see a bit of in today's episode, considering that Julio Pligazello does have an injury, and as well as that, we did spend a bit more money first up. One of Leeds United's promising right-wingers was getting some attention from Bristol City, and to be fair, did look like an upgrade on someone like Tyreek Wright as the backup. And behind Morgan Whitaker, so we did sign Ian Paveda from Leeds United, definitely an upgrade on Tyreek Wright, more current ability, and a bit more potential as well, and he comes here, we bought him for I think £650,000, indeed that was the case, he had been on loan at Blackpool last season, in the championship, and he joins us for the second part of this season, it does mean that Tyreek Wright, we are going to try and get rid of, in this transfer window, currently under loan bid, from Cambridge United, but Ian Paveda, certainly an upgrade in that backup, and behind one of our star men, and Morgan Whitaker, a couple of good green attributes there, so hopefully he will be a good backup if Morgan Whitaker does need to be replaced. That was our first transfer that we did make here, the first incoming under my management here at Plymouth Argyle. And off the back of that, 
we did make one more signing and it was for a right back. Of course, right back was an area we were quite thin coming into the start of the season here at Plymouth Argyle. And we did sign on a free transfer, Al Mami Toure, the Malian international who's actually currently away on AFCON due. So that's actually not quite as good a transfer as I was hoping. So for today's episode, we're probably still going to be a bit light at right back. But he's a very decent player to pick up on a free 12k a week for a squad player. I actually thought he would want a much higher wage and that's a quite happy to pick him up. Good well-rounded right back who can also cover centre-back, three-star current ability, three-and-a-half star potential. The 27-year-old joins us, having left Eintracht Frankfurt going to the start of this current season. So that's a good pickup, does mean got some extra cover at right-back and also just improved our options off of the bench at right-wing as well as centre-back, and that is important in particular in centre-back because Julio Pigazello, he is out currently with an injury, which go over here and go to the right screen so this does not get blocked. By my head, and if we eventually make our way to the current injury screen, not the injury history screen, he is out with a groin strain he picked up in that draw against Cardiff, and he will be out for two to four weeks. So it does mean that Sebastian Hausner will get some game time alongside Lewis Gibson in it today's episode. And to be fair, tribute wise, that these days is probably our best centre back pairing. So hopefully they can do a decent job in these two games in today's episode. And to be fair, they do both look pretty winnable as first up. We host a team just outside of the relegation zone in West Brom. We drift these guys in the first part of the season, albeit that one was at the Hawthorns. Hopefully, we can pick up a decent result here against Javi Glacier's men at home park. And of course, this is the first game that Ben Wayne will play in a little while off the back of that red card. And also, during the month of December, you will notice he was missing for a few games off the back of that performance against QPR. That is because he picked up a virus. So since you were last here, not much action for the Wayne train, but hopefully he will come back and steam along during the course of today's episode. But first up, we take on West Brom. As I said, a game we should really be winning based on table position. And in terms of our team for this one, obviously with that injury to Julio, as I said, Hausner, he comes in at centre back. Dan Scar still on the bench. And also, we have got Pervedo on the bench as that right wing cover instead of Tyreek Wright. So just a couple of changes to our usual lineup here at Plymouth Argyle, but hopefully we can pick up a good result here against the team who are struggling so far this season and make sure that we keep a good gap on top of the championship table. And here are the team sheets. There we are as we ran through before. You'll see Sebastian Hausner in his first start for Plymouth Argyle. And here are West Prom today. They are in the lime green. We're going to be in the darker green. Still got a couple of decent players there in the likes of Dean Garner and Maja up front. They could be some players that could cause us some issues with their pace, but hopefully still with someone like Kesler Hayden at right back. He's been superb for us so far in the save. Hopefully his form continues into 2024 and we can pick up a win here. Early yellow card to Randall, not ideal. As we get into the first couple of minutes of this game, we eventually do get the first shot off and shortly off the back of that, it is a thrown in our favour, albeit just inside of our own half. But there is Halsner. He is on the ball, plays that one for brief to Randall. Gets it back now. Kesler Hayden passes that one forward to Finn Azaz. Drifting back from a central attacking midfield position. Thankfully, does well there to keep the ball and find the teammate. We get that one forward now to Jordan Halton. Plays that one back to Bali Mumba down that left-hand side. Still doing a decent job at left back instead of probably his more favoured role as a left winger. But now Callum Wright, he gets in behind nice and nearly looks to square that one. But unfortunately, it takes a deflection from one of the West Brom players. And actually forces a decent save there out of their goalkeeper, but early stages, we are on the front foot, hopefully can grab an early goal here to get in front, Finn Hazars, he picks up, Cullen Wright squares that one nicely for the Wayne train, and he's back in the team, and scores a goal almost immediately to give us a 1-0 lead, his 16th goal of the season, still actually quite high up there on the championship top goal scorer charts, despite the fact he has missed a lot of football in one of the busiest periods of the season, but thankfully, that is a very good start for him, nice assist there, for Cullum Wright, and we take an early 1-0 no lead immediately. Off the back of that, there might be a reply here from West Brom Townsend. Plays that one forward, and we'll get it back there down that left-hand side. So West Brom with a chance here to potentially grab an early equaliser. Hopefully, that will not be the case. We can kick on, unlike what we did against Cardiff in our last game. But Ben Doak, the good player on loan from Liverpool, he just gets that ball back there from West Brom, and now OK, he plays that one out to the right back, I believe. And Furlong was an okay pass. They have the ball there, but good work there from Azaz to win that one back for us. Now, Morgan Whitaker plays that one back to Kesler Hayden. Rather, really, 
doesn't attack the line, but now Whitaker, he gets in behind. Lovely finish that from the outside of the foot. He picks up his 17th of the season. So he's back in front in terms of the goal scoring race here at Plymouth Argyle. And it's a brilliant start. Two quick fire goals inside of the first 10 minutes to give us a 2-0 lead. And hopefully, unlike the Cardiff City game, we can now hold on and pick up all three points. It's a really good finish that from Whitaker and Kiers the Hayden. Not his usual assist. Usually he bombs forward and floats one into the mixer, but he will pick one up and give us a 2 lead. Off the back of that, there is the Adeng who is off the field. So a chance for us here to maybe grab one more goal while West Brom are down. Two 10 minutes of shocker there from Palmer and goal. And Cullen Wright will pick up his 11th of the season. All our front three now have scored. I say front three. Finn is ours. Sorry, forgot about you. But it's a brilliant start for us here at Plymouth Argyle inside the first 15 minutes. We now make it 3-0 and that is a shocking goalkeeping error, albeit that does feel a bit justified off the back of what happened in that Cardiff City game with Mike Cooper. So thankfully, we get some justice from that, albeit not in the same game. And that makes it 3-0. And already, this might be game over here in our first one of today's episode. And off the back of that, shortly, we have a thrown inside of the final third. Finn is ours there for Cullen Wright. will bury that one into the bottom left corner. As that one goes in, Ipswich Town take a 1-0 lead. So unfortunately, despite all these goals, might not mean our gap going back to the teams in that playoff hunt is going to be extended, but it's been a really hot start for us here. Only 18 minutes gone, and we make it 4-0 now. Two goals to Cullen Wright, as well as ones to Ben Wayne, and of course Morgan Whitaker. He is well and truly onside. Good finish to beat Palmer, not having a good start to this game. We make it 4-0, not even halfway through the first half. And just catching my breath there, briefly off the back of that opening, only a few minutes later, it is here a corner in our favour as Rotherham. They grab an equaliser there against Ipswich Town. It falls there to Ben Wayne at the far post. It says there is 16th for the season. That's because it's not going to count. I did think that was a little bit strange. Maybe that is a telltale sign the goal will get ruled out for offside. But unfortunately, strays into an offside position. Does not pick up a second of the game. But we are still well and truly in control of this one just past the half hour mark. Still up by four goals to nil. And starting to make our way now towards the last couple of minutes of this first half. And for the first time in this game, West Brom, they do get a chance to do something. Albeit they did have that restart off the back of our opening goal, but nothing came from that. But this time, they're a bit further forward. Peters tries to get something going here down that left-hand side. Finds Townsend, but gives that one away poorly. Now Randall will probably come off at halftime for Matt Butcher on that yellow card. No need to risk things here with a 4-0 lead. But he does well there to win the ball back for us now. Ben Wayne, he plays that one back to Gibson. Now Mumba in good space there down that left-hand side. What will he do? He looks for Cullum Wright on a hat-trick. Good one too and gets it back there as Cullum Wright finds Ben Wayne inside the box. It's very helter-skelter for Nazars there with a good chance found himself in behind with the goal at his mercy. But unfortunately, that one comes off the post. It is still 4-0, but to be fair, now feels like we're getting some good chances to potentially well and truly put this game to bed and make it 5-0 before halftime, albeit down the other end shortly off the back of that. And Daryl Dyke will put that one home. That's a little bit iffy there defensively from our new signing in Sebastian Howes number Dang, despite the fact he is carrying an injury. Really good pace there and fizzes this one into the mixer. Not really sure there why Hausner hasn't just stuck out a foot to stop that ball finding Daryl Dyke, but for some reason he hasn't. And West Brom do grab a goal back, but to be fair, even this early, that does feel like it might be just a consolation goal for one, albeit still a long way to go. But off the back of that, we are back on the attack. Mumba makes his way inside the box. We'll try and rocket that one into the bottom right corner, but good save this time from the West Brom goalkeeper in Palmer. Of course, has it a bit of an iffy first half so far, but keeps it at 4-1. We do have a corner off the back of that to end the first half. Morgan Whitaker tries to power that one top left corner, but his shot it does get blocked. And Kiesla Hayden will try and get us back on the attack. But the highlight does end as Leeds United. They take a lead over Norris. All the teams in and around us on the table are picking up wins on this match day. But thankfully, that is also the case with us. We are well and truly in control here with a 4-1 lead. As I suggested, Matt Butcher, he will come on for the yellow carded Randall at halftime. But I think that's all we need to do this one. Going very much to plan. 4-1 up at halftime at home against West Brom. And early stages of the second half, an early free kick here in our favour in this as well. And truly in Morgan Whitaker range, will try and bend this one, no doubt, into the top left corner. But unfortunately, that one goes well wide. Maybe not enough build up for that one because he can score from that range. But unfortunately, that time puts it well wide. And just making our way now past the hour mark. And it might be time for us here to make our first substitution. Indeed, it is as Kesler Hayden playing well on a 7.4 
has gone down to a red heart, and also Callum Wright as well. So off the back of this highlight, which has just started, will make our first couple of substitutions. Might be a decent chance for us here to get some bench players some minutes, but it is here West Brom, who are on the attack, and yet again, Daryl Dyke, he gets in behind and puts that one away. So maybe they're back in this game here, West Brom. Off the back of that, we will make some changes. Joe Edwards can come on for Kesler Hayden and Mustafa Bundu for Callum Wright. We'll just take off those players who were down on those red hearts also. We'll just check in briefly on some player instructions off the back of those two goals now that West Brom have scored either side of halftime. But poor pass here from Bali Mumba looking for Azaz. But Malumbi is right in the way. And then it is Doak who plays that one forward to Marja and Dyke yet again gets in behind Hausner. I believe that is indeed that is the case. Not the greatest debut for Hausner, even though he is on a 7.1. But West Brom now well and truly back in this one. And off the back of that, a corner here in their favour. They try and put that one into the back of the net. Marja gets off a near post header eventually, but thankfully that one goes over the bar. Even then Cooper, I think, might have had that one. And off the back of that now, Morgan Whitaker is down to Red Hearts, one of our new signings. And Ian Paveda, he can make his on-camera debut off of the bench, the former Leeds United man. Interesting transfer considering Leeds United now one of the teams who are well and truly in an automatic promotion fight. But now with 15 minutes left and it is now Jordan Helton who is down to a red half. So her last substitution, Lewis Warrington, will come on for him. But West Brom well and truly are back in this game for 2 But hopefully we can find a way to hold on and pick up all three points. This one will be a lot more frustrating than the Cardiff result. With a four goal lead, that would be a bit of a shocking one if we gave this up. But thankfully, win the ball back there after giving away briefly. And Bundu just inside the box plays that one back to Mumba. Starts to make his way forward, puts that one far post. Pabeda tries to loop that one over Palmer and goal. But unfortunately, that's a pretty easy save to be fair. Not the greatest chance of the highlight does continue. And thankfully, we win that one back. Now, Bundu, good one too there with Ben Wayne now Butcher. Back in there for Lewis Warrington. Nice ball over the top there for Mustafa Bundu, who will sneak that one inside the far post. To be fair, Cullum Wright was actually on a hat trick when I took him off. So I suppose Cullum Wright can feel a bit filthy about that now. Might have picked up a hat trick if we did leave him on. But thankfully, that goal does mean that we should now definitely pick up all three points, albeit after taking a 4 0 lead. That was never really in doubt. But thankfully, we stopped the flow from West Brom either side of half time with 10 minutes left. That should wrap up all three points. Mustafa Bundu, he grabs one off of the bench to give us a 5-2 lead. And now making our way into the last couple of minutes of this game, there is one more highlight here with only four minutes left and it is a free kick here. Pabeda, he takes a short option there, does try and find Finn Azaz. Good chance that we have scored a couple of goals since you were last here. Like that from set piece, but unfortunately that one, a good save from Palmer to keep it at 5-2. And yet again, this highlight will continue. He pumps that one that time down the right-hand side, but Joe Edwards, will control that butcher good pass there under pressure to find Warrington back on the ball and it goes back to Halsman's being a little bit iffy in his first game but to be fair best situation to do that because we do have a big lead here up by five goals to and now it's Bundu yet again who does get in behind tight angle does start to cut inside curves that one wonderfully past Palmer into the bottom right corner it's a double there for Mustafa Bundu off of the bench both our left wingers who have played in this game have picked up two goals that makes it 6-2. Well and truly game over here. We pick up three points to keep ourselves on top of the championship table. That is a very nice finish to get back our full goal advantage. And it's going to be a very, very comprehensive win here over West Brom. Albeit it was expected a team who are struggling this season in the championship. One more highlight. Three minutes into added time. And maybe we can make it 7-2 here. Pervader on the ball. Albeit loose touch. And Dyke who's been playing well. Wins that one back for West Brom. He'll be looking for a hat trick, but Ben Doak makes his way on the edge of the box. Good chance there for Marja, but thankfully that one comes off the post that beats Cooper. Goes out for a goal kick, and that is all she wrote in this one. It was a very entertaining game, full of goals, and we pick up a 6-2 win stats-wise. I think we deserve that. The scoreline probably flattered us a little bit, but that higher tempo sometimes we can kick on and score a lot of goals. But thankfully, after taking a very early 4-0 lead, we do hold on it, just fretting there for a little bit to be another bottle job off the back of that double to Daryl Dyke. But thankfully, we do pick up a win considering Ipswich Town and Leeds United also did the same right behind us in the automatic promotion race. But we're still on top of the championship off the back 
of a 6-2 win over West Brom. We'll come back shortly and get stuck into the second game as we take on Swansea and also update you guys if anything does happen on transfer deadline day with still around £800,000 left in our budget. So a very good result for us there first up in today's episode against the West Brom team, albeit they are struggling. Off the back of that, wasn't expecting us to do anything on transfer deadline day, but then we got another barrage of injuries like we had at the start of the season. To be fair, most of them aren't too serious. Mike Cooper out for six days to two weeks, so it does mean that Connor Hazard back in goal for this next game, where we do take on Swansea. Also, Jordan Houghton, a twisted ankle. He'll be missing for a little while, so Lewis Warrington will come into the first team and Saxon early. Instead of being our backup left back, he instead will be the backup deep line playmaker. But more concerningly, big injury to Joe Edwards, damaged cruciate ligaments. He'll be out to seven to ten months, and it also means he is now potentially considering retirement. So that did mean might not be the worst idea on transfer deadline day, or at least off the back of that injury, to dip in to the transfer market to find someone who can cover right back and left back. We had a couple of options that we could look for with that left over £800,000. The first of those was Nathan Ferguson from Crystal Palace, but he was very injury prone, so probably not a good idea. So instead, a cheap transfer, very similar to the one that we did do for Reese Williams, albeit this time someone who can come in immediately. And we have picked up Ryan Fredericks from Bournemouth, for £225,000 to be fair, seeing as he's a bit more of a right back than a left back, I actually think he's a perfect play to come on if Kesler Hayden is not performing that well, because physically he is very quick. That's something that Kesler Hayden also has, but we are paying him a pretty decent wage for a fringe player, but to be fair, he is quite good. Three and a half star current ability and potential can cover both sides, so it's exactly what we're looking for if Joe Edwards does retire, hopefully. That might not be the case, but to be fair, Ryan Fredericks, definitely an upgrade on Joe Edwards. We'll see what does happen with our club captain here at Plymouth Argo. but Ryan Fredericks we do get on a very cheap deal from Bournemouth, having not played for them very much in the Premier League this season, albeit when he has his done well with a 7 average rating, but he should definitely be some good bench impact if we need it off of the bench throughout the rest of this season. So an interesting transfer there, wasn't planning on doing it, but with that Joe Edwards injury, which might actually end his career, that was something I thought might be a safe option. It does also mean that now our mummy Tule might be an interesting spot as that other extra right back option now that Ryan Fredericks does look like he is a little bit better and probably the second choice in it. that position, albeit the fact he can also cover left back might mean he does stay on the bench for the most part. So a couple of injuries going to the second game of today's episode where we do take on a Swansea team who we did beat 3-1 at home park early this season. Hopefully we can do something similar here, albeit away from home. This one could be a little bit tricky now. Obviously, quite a few changes to our team for this game with all those injuries that we are dealing with. So that does mean that Connor Hazard comes back in goal for Mike Cooper, obviously with that injury, and also Lewis Warrington for the injured Jordan Helton, and also Brian Fredericks on the bench in place of the potentially now retiring Joe Edwards, that could mean some captaincy changes here at Plymouth Argyle if that is the case, but that should mean our squad now a little bit stronger than it previously was, just adding some extra quality off the back of that issue, so it might actually be a blessing in disguise, making the most of that spare transfer budget still does mean we've got a little bit to spend if we do find some players that we're still interested in come the last month heading into the new season. Of course, did have some players lined up for free transfers, but of course here in England, you can't sign them until the final month of their contract, unlike if you're an overseas club, you can sign them up for six months prior. That does seem a little bit weird, not too used to that situation when managing here in England. Don't do it too often on Football Manager, so that is something that did throw me out a little bit. Some good players that we can pick up, hopefully, going to the start of next season, like Ben Woodburn, a bit of an upgrade potentially on someone like Mikel Miller, but we'll cross that bridge come the later stages of this season, but early stages here, not much doing, albeit we get the first shot off, but shortly off the back of that, it is Swansea here, who are in position, albeit looks like we're putting some good pressure on them. The goalkeeper pumps this one deep, Kesler Hayden wins it, but unfortunately, can't quite find Warrington, and Grimes wins that one now. Cooper starts to make his way forward, just jogs his way through our defence, and Hazard with an absolutely shocking attempt in goal. Connor Hazard was so good for us earlier this season when Cooper was injured, but that was a very poor effort in Cooper with a wonderful goal considering he got that ball just inside his own half, but still that's really poor defensively 
from our outfield players and also Connor Hazard. He should have got down sooner and kept that one from going in the back of the net. But that is a very frustrating start to this one. We go 1-0 down early. Maybe Mike Cooper, not too bad at all. Off the back of that, we demand more. And unfortunately, it does cut off a highlight. So still 1-0 down here in this away game. A trip to Wales here for the Wayne Train. But now it's a corner here. Whitaker puts this one into the mixer. It now finds its way to Horsner just inside the box. We look here for Ben Wayne at the far post in the Wayne Train. We'll put that one home and make it one also. Thankfully, went behind for too long. That Connor Hazard error doesn't cost us too much. And we level things up here in Swansea. Whitaker put this one near post. It was dealt with, but thankfully Halsner wins that one. Plays it to Callum Wright, who puts that one far post. And Ben Wayne got sagged off a little bit there and puts it home to the Wayne Train. Scores in back-to-back -back goals. And he makes it one all, which is thankful. As Ipswich Town have grabbed an early 2-0 lead there over Preston. Preston North End these days actually managed by the former Plymouth Argyle manager in this save in Stephen Schumacher. So that might be an interesting one to come back for during the second part of it this season. But now we're starting to get on the front foot, but unfortunately still locked up at one all. And it looks like that will be all she wrote for the first half. So unfortunately a big error there from Connor Hazard, but thankfully a Ben Wayne header that does mean we are locked up at one all going in. To the second half, just checking here on some player ratings and Finn Azar's not doing too well at all on a 6.4. So Luke Kundal can count on him to be fair. Luke Kundal, a tribute wise, should be better than Finn Azar's, but Azar's has been in great form so far. So that is why he's kept that starting spot over the man on loan from Wolves. But we make that one change going to the second half. Hopefully, can play a lot better and make sure we pick up three points here to keep that nice gap on Ipswich Town in third spot on the championship table. And also, Leeds United are winning as well. So a win here would be pretty nice drop points. That might just open the door for those teams in behind us to potentially get into a strong position. Now at the R mark, and it's Morgan Whitaker struggling on a 6.4. Ian Pabeda can come on for him. And also Bali Mumba is only going okay on a 6.5, but I think for now we'll just leave that one. We'll bring on someone like Ryan Fredericks a little bit later. If we need to, opposition instructions, they look good for now. We'll encourage the guys and hopefully can grab a winning goal in the last 35 minutes of this one. We'll just keep a big eye out here on the player fitness. Bali Mumba still on a 6.5. Now we're starting to make our way towards the last 15 minutes of this game. Warrington goes down to a red heart. We've got options here between Matt Butcher and Saxon early. Butcher is a lot better in terms of Matt Sharpness, so he can come on, albeit in an unfamiliar role of deep-lying playmaker. And also Mumba still on that 6.5, so Ryan Fredericks can come on for him. We'll see what our new man can do out on that left-hand side. It does mean two rapid players at wing-back for us for the latter stages of this game. Hopefully, that might help us create a chance like Kesler Hayden often does. On that right-hand side also, done to make our way to the last 15 minutes of this game, we'll chuck Fredericks onto support and Pabeda onto attack. And shortly off the back of that, not too sure if it's gone through yet. But we have a front down our left-hand side. Gibson plays that one over to Hulsner today, having a bit more of a solid game than he did in that first one. Nice ball over the top there from Butcher. It does nearly fine right, but thankfully Butcher off the back of that clearance wins it back in Fredericks with his first touch in a Plymouth Argyle shirt. Wayne plays that one out to him. He returns the favour, and Ben Wayne with another header. Ryan Fredericks grabs an assist with one of his first touches in a Plymouth Argyle shirt. So that's already looking like it might be a pretty good transfer off the back of that. We'll chuck those player roles back to what they were previously because thankfully we are in front, and that is important with those results that were going on with Leeds United. And Ipswich Town, but Rushworth there tries to make himself big. Thankfully, Ben Wayne heads that one into the ground. He picks up his second goal of the game. It does mean he is hat-trick hunting in the last 10 minutes, but good one too there between Fredericks and Wayne, and it does mean we take a 2-1 lead off the back of that. Here's the Hayden and Callum Wright are down to Red Hearts. We don't have any right-back cover on the bench, but we do have Saxon early, so we might actually bring on Saxon early here in place of Keir's the Hayden. Ryan Fredericks can go as more natural position of right-back and early he can play at left back. That will hopefully mean that we're nice and fresh defensively for the last little while. This game also will tell our guys to be more disciplined and just time waste a little bit to try and hold on here to all three points of having fallen behind early. And shortly off the back of that, it's actually a free kick here for Swansea. Hopefully this doesn't prove costly. And there's a big old wait for this one to take place as well. Just checking here who's part of the wall. Interesting that Ben Wayne is. Our two centre backs are alongside him, but Cullen will look for that top left corner, thankfully, despite the fact that Hazard doesn't try and make a save, it goes close, but it does come off the crossbar, we still keep hold 
of our 2-1 lead now and two four minutes of added time. Right near the end, there's one more hole in this one. Hopefully, we can keep hold of the ball. Ben Wayne plays that one back to Randall, plays that one forward to Luke Kundal. We try and find someone there at the far post that eventually finds its way back out to Ryan Fredericks and Ben Wayne will pick up a hat trick in the Wayne train. Make sure that we escape here with all three points, three goals all through his head. And Ryan Fredericks off of the bench will grab an assist on either side. That one from the right, Luke Kundal plays this one looking for Paveda. There's a foot in there from Peterson. Brings him down. Play on though, thankfully. And Fredericks floats that one in for Ben Wayne. And he will score a hat-trick of hitters. The first hat-trick that Ben Wayne has scored in this save. Hopefully, it is not the last. And Ben Wayne makes sure that we go back to home park with all three points. It was looking pretty iffy there. The early stages off the back of that first goal that Swansea scored. That one, not Connor has his finest moment. But thankfully, Ben Wayne off the back of that. He scores three hitters off the back of balls from Cullen Wright. And those two late ones from Ryan Fredericks. So Ben Wayne, his first hat-trick of the save, and it does come at a big time as well. Otherwise, that might have been some pretty interesting drop points that when I toned up the gap on top of the championship table. But thankfully, we escaped that one with a 3-1 win. Largely thanks to a Ben Wayne hat-trick and also good impact immediately from Ryan Fredericks. So thankfully we pick up two wins from today's episode as expected against a couple of teams a lot further down the table than we are here at Plymouth Argyle in that second game. Even better considering that Ben Wayne grabbed the hat-trick also. Ryan Fredericks, some immediate impact there off of the bench. He grabbed two assists. So hopefully he will be a good replacement for Joe Edwards who might not be playing anymore in this save. We'll see if we have an update on that coming in to tomorrow's episode. Fredericks was very impressive in his debut to assist in those last 15 minutes, but obviously Ben Wayne, the star man, he picks up a hat trick, and that does make sure that we stay on top of the championship table. To be fair, even if we lost that one, that would have been the case, but still six points clear of Leeds United and nine points clear of Ipswich Town. And I think at this point, it's probably too much ground for the likes of Blackburn, Southampton, Leicester, and Hull City to try and claim back on us. So I think at the very least in this save, we should be in the playoffs come the end of the season, even though there's still 16 games left, but hopefully we can at least hold on over one of Leeds and Ipswich and make our way straight up to the Premier League off the back of the first season of the save, and also good to see Ben Wayne off the back of today's episode, now back on top of the Championship goal scorer charts, Morgan Whitaker also up there, and Kesler Hayden and Finn Azars are also at the top of the assist charts as well, so things are still going very well for us here. At Plymouth Argyle, two wins in today's episode and still on top of the championship off the back of that Ben Wayne hat trick. If you enjoyed those two games in today's episode as well, is that transfer update, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow for two absolutely massive games in late February, in fact, ones at the start of March, but we'll take on the two teams who I believe are the only two who could potentially deny us from getting automatically promoted to the Premier League and also stopping us from winning the title on our way there. They are both home games, but we take on Leeds United and Ipswich Town, and both teams did beat us in the first half of the season. Those games, though, were away from home this time. They are at home park. If we can win both of those games, I dare say that might just about confirm our path up to the Premier League next season, hopefully as champions. But if we do lose those games, that could make things very interesting. So big games coming up in tomorrow's episode. Also that one in between away at Middlesbrough, that won't be easy either. But those are probably our biggest games left in the remainder of this championship season. So make sure you come back to those in tomorrow's episode. And until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.